Thank you. Hello. So my name is Richard Tay. I also work in the Google Creative Lab, just like Indy, but I'm in the New York office. And we have this uh, small metaphor of what the Creative Lab does. Uh, and it is basically connecting the users to the magic. Um, so one simple way of doing that is straightforward advertising, which is really what we do sometimes, creating an ad for the Super Bowl. That is speaking about the magic. Um, uh, the second point is using it, and Indy showed amazing examples of that, using Chrome in an extraordinary way and showing what you can actually do with the platforms that Google builds. And recently, the Creative Lab has been involved in, in actually creating it. So there was a redesign for, of all of Google products. It was a very subtle thing, but it was also a big deal for the company, redesigning all the individual products so that they have much more of a streamlined look and a, a nicer brand. And I personally have been involved with uh, Google Glass. And uh, I want to show you the work that the Creative Lab has been doing with Google Glass. So um, we've been working with the Google X team that works on Glass. They are all in Mountain View um, in California since about two years. And the first time we started talking, Glass looked a little bit like this. So it was a helmet uh, or a pair of glasses with a cell phone strapped to it and a camera. And they were exploring all kinds of things. So um, what form factor should it be? What interactions make sense? How do you uh, display information? Um, what technology should you actually put on this? What makes sense for a wearable device, considering the whole ecosystem of devices that we already have? Um, and so at that time, they also asked the Creative Lab, and they said, uh, why don't you chip in? What are your ideas? What do you think would be interesting for the device? Uh, and so, of course, we're not software engineers. We're in the marketing department, so it's all creatives. But we try to use our tools. So we put together a team of animators, graphic designers, writers, um, creative technologists, uh, and most of all, filmmakers. And we created a little, little, little video. Um, meet me in front of Strand Books at 2. Hmm. Oh man, really? Hey there, guy. Hey there, little guy. Sweet. Remind me to buy tickets for Monsieur Gano tonight. Where's the music section? Uh, oh, yes, this is it. Is Paul here yet? Huh. Hey, dude, how's it going? Wanna go check out that new place I was telling you about? Sure. This truck's really good. Hey, just a second. Yeah. Cool. Good to see you again. Thanks, man. It's got a new place, not that city. See you, dude. Whoa, cool. Take a photo of this. Share it to my circles. Oh, I'm running late. Music, stop. Hi, what's up? Hey. Hey. You want to say something cool? Yeah, sure. Is that a ukulele? Yep. Okay, here goes. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> So we created this video, and um, this is our filmmaker, too, uh, shooting it. Uh, so basically, this is a GoPro camera strapped to a head and walking around and filming this point-of-view footage. Um, but I think it actually was an uh, interesting exploration, especially because um, we put ourselves into the video, 
and we created this narrative. So when you put yourself in the video, then you really think about, would that make sense for me in my personal life, or is that just ridiculous? And so that really worked well. Um, and I think there were also quite some interesting interface ideas that came in it. So you're looking up in the morning out the window, and you see the weather. You know if you have to take an umbrella or not. Or you're walking to the subway station, and you hear about uh, uh, if the subway is this, uh, suspended, and you get turn-by-turn -turn direction to the destination that you need to go to, or taking a photo just with your voice right away. And so this was interesting because this video was only planned as an internal exploration, so it was an internal vision video. Uh, we uh, sent it to the team, they liked it very much, it was a, a big inspiration. Um, and they actually went and uh, explored the, if this would be the user interface for the device. Uh, so they actually built a whole system around it uh, and explored it. This is uh, the, the full system laid out. But it actually didn't, didn't work that well, right? Because we just imagined it, and we were very naive, and we just explored it, and we also thought about um, as if the experience is this immersive thing where you have an overlay in front of your actual view, uh, and all of these things are very different with the actual device. Um, when they launched the Explorer Edition, they actually, um, or when they announced Google Glass, they actually showed this video and released it to the public, and it was the um, most, uh, had the most views uh, of any Google videos that were ever released. But they, of course, clearly labeled it as just a vision video. So in the meantime, um, the project itself had come a long way. So this is, shows a little bit of the evolution of the device. So the team in Mountain View literally produces one physical prototype per month, which is really crazy if you're talking about consumer electronics. Uh, and that is still going on because we're still in this explorer phase. Um, and obviously, uh, the, the device is very different from uh, what you would imagine originally from like an augmented reality glasses, because you have this small display in the top right of your vision, and it's, it really is just a peripheral display. So we have it here too. It really is just this very small device. And I'm going to show you this little introduction video that explains how to use glass. the product. This is your touchpad. It runs from your temple to your ear. Tap the touchpad to wake up glass. You should see the display above your line of sight. Adjust it to see everything. The home screen shows a clock. This is your timeline. It's a row of cards. Things to the left are happening now or coming up, like the weather, an upcoming flight, or an event in your calendar. You can tap on any card to see more. Swipe down anywhere to go back to the timeline. Cards to the right of the home screen are from the past. For example, messages, videos, or photos. Tap on a photo to share it and choose one of your friends. Swipe down to go back to standby and have fun exploring. So this is just a little video that explains um, the product itself and the interface that we came up with. And I would like to actually talk about the details of the interface uh, and how we designed it. So as you can see, it is a small display, in your, uh, and it's in your periphery of your vision. So if I'm actually looking at somebody, I look directly in their eyes, and I'm not looking through glass. That's a very key difference from, from what you would actually think of, of what it's doing. It's a peripheral display. There's no keyboard input, but uh, there's very good voice input. And you just have the trackpad on the side to navigate. So this device has a lot of limitations. If we think from going from desktop to um, mobile, we had to deal with limitations. This is even more extreme. Uh, and so these are some of the principles that we thought were very important. So the, the first thing is the now. Um, I don't know. Who knows about Google Now? Have you? Do you know this the project Google Now? So basically, Google Now is the idea that Google should be giving the, you the information that you need at exactly the right time, uh, and you shouldn't even have to ask Google for something. So if you have an upcoming flight, uh, there should be a card right there waiting for you with the airline and the terminal and the gate that you have to go to and uh, let you know if you're on time or not. And I think that is something that is, we should be embracing with Glass. Uh, here's the Google Now. Uh, on. 
This is another idea about the now. So basically, if you look at this, living this within an ecosystem of devices, the cloud is where we'll have all of our data, and it'll be stored there forever as long as we need it. So for example, my image archive from my whole life, I have it in the cloud, I can search it with Google, etc. It's great. My laptop, maybe I exchange my laptop every two years. I have the photos from the last two years on my laptop. And on my phone, I check the emails from last week. So Glass is really about now. I get information coming in, I act on it, or I forget about it, and then I take care of it on another device. Um, but I really shouldn't care about, oh, Glass has 12, 12 gigabytes of memory, etc. That all shouldn't matter for Glass. Um, the, other, the other big idea that we thought was, um, seeing the world. So uh, just as I explained, the device is actually in the periphery of your vision, and although the technology gets closer to your body, the idea is that um, you can actually explore, the f explore and enjoy the physical world more. So this is almost like a vision uh, piece because it doesn't work exactly like this yet, but imagine you're at the Grand Canyon and you just say to Glass, share this with Monica, and it takes care of the rest. You don't have to take the photo, um, find the uh, share menu, send it by email to Monica, choose the contact. It, you really don't want to care with, uh, deal with any of those things. You want to enjoy the moment while also being connected with your friends. Of course, the camera and capturing photos is a big deal on glass. Uh, so um, uh, taking a photo or recording a film while being in the moment is an important thing. And you can even do that without your hands by using voice. Um, this is another important idea is uh, that we already all carry devices in our pockets where we can talk to the whole world, your 500 friends on your favorite social network. But uh, so Glass should actually be about the, the, the really important people in your circle. So that's what we prioritize in the UI. Um, as you saw in the video, uh, there is actually not that much of a navigation. There is no app screen where you choose individual apps, etc. So Instead, there's just one simple timeline. So the whole UI really just feels like one space. And everything is represented in individual cards. And each of these cards uh, is about a single piece of information or a single activity. And uh, it has this timeline metaphor. So everything that happens to the right are things that you produce or that are coming in from the past, so photos, messages, news articles. And everything that's to the left of the timeline are things that are happening now or coming up like uh, Google Now. Um, another big thing is something that we only realized once you actually use the device is uh, it is very small and you really have to make everything about a single, single purpose. So one card always rep represents one piece of information or is one thing uh, and there's no complex UI around it. Uh, and that's an interesting moment because we really went from uh, designing something like an email program from the browser or from a desktop app to something that runs on our phones. And we had to reduce things a lot. And we also had to take away a lot of things. But still, everything works really well. And going from, from something, a big touchscreen phone to glass is even one more radical step. But it's still possible. And it's nice, because at some point, all you see is really the thing that you're doing. So in this case, you're filming a piece of video. You don't need to see a video player or anything. You just see the video, and you just understand what, it's, what, it, what is happening. And so uh, in terms of information design, I sometimes think uh, designing for glass is almost like very good poster design, right? It has to be visually attractive. You have to have a good visual hierarchy, and you have to convey information in, in the right way. So these are some of the example cards that we've been designing for Google Now, the weather, messages, photos, and videos. And you can see how much you have to reduce information. And every little piece of things that you are putting on there every little piece of information, you have to make a clear decision. Does this actually make sense, or can you just throw it out? Which is, you just don't have the luxury as, that you have on desktop, but that also gives it a clarity and a sharpness. And the other thing that's very fun is, both with the reduction of the information and with the, with the voice interface, um, you almost have to not have any user interface at all that is visible. Either you interact with content directly, and you only look at content and interact with content, or you speak to it. And of course, right now, the, the voice UI is still a little bit limited, but eventually, you'll just ask it anything, and it'll do anything that you ask for. So for example, you just say, say half a pound in Chinese, and you get a translation right away. 
there it is. Um, and during this whole process of designing this uh, over the last half a year, or, um, three quarters of a year, uh, one of the designers from the, from the Google Glass team made a diagram looking at the previous video that we showed and looking what things are actually already working on Glass and what things that do not work yet. And uh, we're actually pretty close. Everything that's green just works on Glass already, and some things are on the way and some things we can't do at all yet such as indoor maps in a bookstore. Uh, I think we have to wait for that a little bit. Uh, and at the same time, while I was then actually working very closely with the product team um, in Mountain View, um, uh, the Creative Lab was also working on the commercial for the Explorer launch, uh, which was earlier this year. And that was a very interesting process because it was literally I'm sitting there, there's Chris McKenzie, um, and on the left side we have the filmmaker that we saw earlier and the animator. And he was shooting scenes, and we were designing the UI, and we'd put them together and see, OK, does this scene benefit from the UI? Is the UI clear enough to communicate in a commercial, in a 30-second commercial, and the other way around? And that was a really fun and interesting process, and also something very unique. I think usually you create the product, and then afterwards you go to an ad agency and ask them, make a commercial for the thing that we've came up, we came up with. And we're really making the commercial while actually also working on the product. And I would like to end with that commercial. Okay, Glass, record a video. This is it. We're on in two minutes. Okay, Glass, hang out with the Flying Club. Google Photos of Tiger Heads. You ready? You ready? Right there. Okay, Glass, take a picture. Thank you. <laughs>